Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Robbie. Guys, today we're gonna check out Piers Morgan's channel again. Piers Morgan uncensored. Yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be uncensored. And today he's interviewing Dan Bilzerian with the headline Brezen Anti-Semite. So I haven't watched the video yet, but I heard that Dan was really in support of Palestine and in support of Muslims, mashallah. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Well, let's talk about some of that, because you've been very vocal about Israel in particular. Um, you know, even when uh, Yaya Simwa, the head of Hamas, was killed by the IDF, uh, you were out lauding him as a hero. Um, you know, to most people, he's the despicable head of a terrorist organization that perpetrated most people. on October the 7th, one of the worst so terror attacks in modern history. What's, what's heroic about that? Well, I think when you look at it in a vacuum, it's a very different picture. It's kind of like if I, you know, raped your mother and I kicked you in the nuts three times and then you punched me in the face and everybody just wanted to focus on you punching me in the face, I think that that would be a very different conversation than when you looked at it, you know, the whole of what happened. And the whole of what happened was Nakba. You know, that's where it started. You have uh, 750,000 Palestinians that got displaced. And then you've got multiple, um, you know, acts of terror, in my opinion, on Israel's side that would... Um, make October 7th look like nothing. Yeah, the argument that Dan Bilzerian is making here, we heard before, of course, he's speaking about context because something happened before October the 7th, of course, for Hamas then to react in a certain way. And if you look into the list of atrocities that Israel committed in Palestinian land, you will, of course, see that this list is very, very extensive, to say the very least. Starting in 1948, roughly 107 Palestinian villagers were killed by Zionist paramilitary groups during the 1948 Arab-Israeli war. And then in 1956, you had 48 Arab civilians killed by Israeli border police. And all of that then leads to 1967, where you had the Six-Day War. And a huge displacement happened of over hundreds of thousands Palestinians. Fast forward to 1982, a massacre happened where up to 3,500 Palestinian refugees got killed. Then 1987 to 1993, the first Intifada, where you had numerous casualties yet again. Then 2000 to 2005, the second Intifada, again thousands of deaths. And then obviously the so-called Gaza Wars, 2008 to 2009, 2012, 2014, 2021, multiple civilian casualties yet again, etc., etc., you name it. And then finally you have October the 7th last year and mainstream sources will say that up to 1,500 people got killed. And of course, it's always sad when innocent lives get taken. However, yet again, context so therefore, when you see what the Israelis have done to the Palestinians over decades, what do you expect? The Palestinians will never do anything? Of course, it is a situation of war. It is a situation of oppression. And under those circumstances, bad things will happen. But yet again, what Dan Bilzerian is saying there, you have to take it into context and that the attack on October the 7th is not a simple action, but rather a reaction to me i think it was a retaliation and i think that hamas is a resistance organization and i think that israel is a terrorist when when did israel kill simplistic people in a, a single day and wound nearly seven thousand? well i mean you have um you know the, i mean nakba there was you know what fifteen thousand people killed during nakba i mean there was um sabr and shatia i mean that was 3,500 civilians, then you have yep. um, 2014, they killed 1,500 civilians. There he goes. 500 plus were kids. I mean, so any one of those days would have been much worse than October 7th, but well, nobody really talks that, about those that. Those didn't happen in a single day. And October day. 7th, it's not well, well, nearly that, as bad that, as what so they what? say. Well, those didn't what happen in single days, as you know. Well, I mean... What kind of argument is this? Argument. Piers Morgan knows it himself, of course, but nevertheless, he's playing his role. 
why does it matter if it was committed in one day or in multiple days? I mean, yet again, the numbers of Palestinian deaths are absolutely staggering and nothing in comparison to Israeli deaths, first and foremost. But yet again, let's just say, well, those deaths, those killings, they didn't happen in a day. Okay, look at a serial killer. I'm going to give you an example here. A serial killer didn't kill all his victims in one day, but he killed for 20 years on end before he finally got caught. Is it therefore less evil because he didn't kill 30, 50, 100 people in one day? Therefore, he is a better person because he took his time? Uh, That's so ridiculous. I mean, Sabra and Shatia, I mean, that was 3,500 people. So that was basically seven October 7th. And October 7th, I think the numbers get inflated a lot too, because you're not taking into account that it was only 650 civilians. And there was the Hannibal sure. Directive that was employed. And the Hannibal Directive is when the military is basically killing civilians so that they aren't taken as hostages. And you know, that had to be hundreds of people. So I would argue that it was less than 500 civilians that were killed. And to me, that is much less than what, you know, the, you know, the Israelis have been doing to the Palestinians. But you said I mean, it's, not even it's not only to him, he said to me. No, it is factually, literally less. Even, you know, the year of, you know, the year when October 7th happened, they had killed, you know, hundreds of Palestinians that year it was the bloodiest year for kids. So that was, you know, that was a reply to what had been happening. Yes. But when you say that, uh, that October 7th wasn't as bad as people have said, uh, uh, what do you mean by that? Because uh, from he just explained his it. own boasting through their GoPro cameras, they mutilated, burned alive, raped and abused, beheaded some people, set fire to homes, they kidnapped babies, they kidnapped Holocaust survivors, grandparents, they did just about every act of depravity it is possible to do. And they didn't just do it. They gleefully posted it on social media and the internet so what? that we could all watch in real time. <laughs> yeah, you often hear that from mainstream personalities like Piers Morgan, but the reality is you couldn't even post such footage on social media. So what footage are we talking about? He talked about rape, pillaging, killing, and what not, killing babies. But there is no social media platform that would allow that anyways. So therefore, you have to get into the dark web of sorts or onto Telegram most of the time. And there you will find all the atrocities and all the war footage that you could ever ask for. And me as an active Telegram admin... I have seen all kinds of atrocities there, and guess what? 99.999% come from the IDF, come from the Israeli side. Moreover, all the claims of beheaded babies, babies in ovens, have been debunked and have been debunked by mainstream media as well. So nothing of those sorts ever happened. Horrors that they were perpetrating. It's hard to imagine a more horrific act than what happened that day. Why would you try to downplay it? Why well, would you say that? I mean, that? there was only two babies killed from what I was told, and one was in the hospital if and the all. other one was shot by a bullet. Uh, there was no babies in ovens. There was no, you know, beheaded people that I saw. Um, you know, the rapes were disproven. So uh, all that was Israeli propaganda. And the problem is Israel yes. has continued to lie and lie and lie, and they've been caught lying. And they're the only ones that have actually been caught red-handed raping prisoners. And they've yep. done it. And the people that raped the prisoners were now heroes. And they got released and there was nothing that happened to them. Exactly. So I think it's very hypocritical to focus they're on even things advocating that they're for doing it. and then try and blame them you know, on Hamas or the Palestinians. Yeah, and moreover, it's so funny how Piers Morgan is wording that. Why would you like to downplay what happened on October the 7th? They always have those dates, those numbers, and you have to believe exactly what everybody else believes. But he's not saying that what happened on October the 7th is the best thing in the world and it's absolutely amazing. Let's be happy about it. He simply says that in relation to the atrocities of the Israelis onto the Palestinians, this is very little, which it is Factually, if you just compare the numbers, you will see that this response is absolutely nothing in comparison. But yet again, this doesn't mean that therefore this is nice and it makes us feel happy and warm and fuzzy inside when we see people die. It's interesting you know, because it's just, to it's me, ridiculous. total bullshit. It's just Israeli propaganda. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's many true. people will listen to you 
and think that what you're spewing is bullshit propaganda from the other side. Yeah, Piers Morgan is just a walking appeal to majority fallacy. Yeah, well, listen, Dan, many people would actually find this offensive. They would say that this is BS, what you are saying there. That is fine that many people would say that. Many people would say all kinds of ridiculous things, but the numbers do not lie. The reason I say that is so you funny. say there was no raping or abuse of women, and yet the UN Special Representative on Sexual Violence in Conflict, Pramila Patton, reported in March this year uh, that there was clear and convincing information that Israeli hostages in Gaza experienced sexual violence, including rape, sexualized torture, and cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment, and reasonable grounds to believe such abuse is ongoing. There was also reasonable grounds to believe that conflict-related sexual violence reasonable occurred during the 7th of October to believe. attacks Where's in the multiple proof? locations Where's the across Gaza periphery, that? including rape and gang rape in at least three locations. So when you say it didn't happen, what you're really saying is you think that the United Nations report into all this, which established it absolutely did happen and was horrific, is what? Is a pack of lies? And if so, why would the, why would the United what? Nations authorities lie? authorities would lie? Look, I wasn't mm -hmm. there, uh, but be? I have, you know, seen articles that said that it did not happen. So, you know, if, if it did happen, that's terrible. And I think that's, you know, atrocious. I don't ever believe in rape, but, you know, during, you know, Sabra and Shatia, there was a, you know, girl raped in front of her father. And, you know, that's happened on the other side numerous times. I mean, it happened in the prison. I mean, they were literally rioting because they felt like they had to, the right to rape these prisoners. So <laughs> yep. to me, I, you know, I it's think our it's, God -given it's, it's right hypocritical. As the chosen um, people. You can't believe that you have the right to rape prisoners and then complain about them raping, you know, your civilians as well. So I, I don't think it just can only go one way. I think it's atrocious yeah, on and both again, sides. Proof, you said uh, Hamas are not terrorists, they're an army fighting for their country against the worst terror org organization on the planet. And yet Hamas were given power in Gaza in 2005. They were given billions of dollars. I just want to clarify that the Hamas topic is, of course, much, much deeper than what is being discussed here on a surface level. Therefore, the romanticized version is, of course, that they are simply freedom fighters. But if you look into the organization, of course, you will find corruption just like anywhere else. But nevertheless, to claim that Hamas are the terrorists, they have to be the terrorists, of course, because they are a Muslim organization, would be, of course, a huge overstatement, especially if you compare, yet again, what Israel has done to the Palestinians. So therefore, very simplistic yet again, but just in this context, who is the bad guy, who is the terrorist? Of course, it is the occupier. A lot of it in a very suspect manner by Benjamin Netanyahu and his government because he wanted to create a rift between Palestinian groups. That so might I be true. Except that. But there's sure. no doubt from what has now emerged that Hamas spent most of that money not on benefiting the lives of Palestinian people in Gaza, but on building an elaborate tunnel system and arming themselves to the teeth so that they could perpetrate this act of horror on October the 7th uh, in a strike against Israel that they hoped would decapitate Israel. Um, I, I'm just curious why you would go out of your way. Now, you say you've read things, but you're a, a guy of big influence. You've got a big following, 30 odd million people on Instagram. You know, You're I, a big I, guy. With respect, you have to and I say support this Israel. I understand why you want to Come support on. the Palestinian cause, and I'm sure there'll be many points of agreement we would have on that. But just to say, well, I read somewhere there were no rapes and abuse. It doesn't seem to me like you've really studied or perhaps don't even want to study. Hmm. Yeah, of course, we have to say here that Dan's argument that he has read something somewhere is a bad argument, of course, no doubts about it. He should have simply rephrased the question and he should have demanded evidence for those rape cases. No, it's not enough to appeal to authority here and say, well, one person in the UN filed that report and therefore it must be true. No, rather, give us the evidence. So Dan, instead of saying, I read something, should have simply said, Piers, can you please provide evidence, hard case evidence of those rapes? Until I don't have any access to that, I'm going to stay neutral and I'm not going to believe the narrative. The facts about all this, because it would go against your own narrative. Would that be fair? What is this own narrative now? I mean, look, I got no dog in this fight, Pierce. I'm not Palestinian. You know, I'm not Muslim. Um, I'm just saying what I believe is right. And let's just let's just say there was rapes. I mean, that's I think that's terrible. But like I said, they are, you know, an occupied state and they're operating in apartheid. So 
when you are kept in an open air prison, there's going to be resistance and how that resistance manifests itself is, you know, it's, it's going to be violent eventually. I mean, if you sure. kill enough people and you take enough land and you treat people like second class citizens and, you know, and, and you're stealing land in the West Bank and you're just basically, you know, encroaching these people's human rights on a daily basis, there, there's going to be repercussions. So, you know, I'm not going to be the judge or jury and I'm not going to condemn these people for fighting back. I think nobody had an issue with, you know, South African apartheid and their resistance. So I don't know why there is an issue with the resistance in the clear apartheid that's going on here. Because they're Arabs, you went on man. A Patrick Bet Davis podcast. Muslims, a Who cares? Of the show. You said the Jews killed JFK, and that Israel wanted October the seventh to happen so that they, Israel, had a reason to take the land. Uh, let's just discuss those two things. What do you mean the Jews killed JFK? You simply cannot critique. So I, I believe that that was Israel. an Israeli Mossad operation, um, and they committed multiple false flag attacks. I mean, they've you know the USS Liberty. You've got the Levin affair. I mean, so they've got a history of doing this, and I don't think it's crazy to think that they were involved in that assassination, and that's the reason that Trump didn't want to you know release those files. And I think clearly it had to be embarrassing. Otherwise, why wouldn't he want to release it? And that's the only thing that I could think of that would be embarrassing because everybody from that time is pretty much dead by now. So it would make sense. I mean, they wanted to cut off, you know, it's now APAC, but the, you know, the Zionist, you know, organization that was doing all the funding that should have been registered as a foreign entity. And, uh, the, you know, he wanted to register them under FAR. He wanted to, you know, take away their ability to have nukes. And, you know, they, they didn't like that. So I believe that they killed JFK. But just to be clear, I mean, you have absolutely no evidence that any Jews killed JFK, do you? Nothing. Well, I mean, that's See, not true. very Jack good, very Rubenstein. strategic. So Piers Morgan's pretty good at this. He's throwing allegations everywhere. But then when it comes down to a critical statement, he's simply demanding evidence, which is the right move here. He's doing that very well. Well, I mean, that's not true. I mean, Jack Rubenstein, that was the person that killed the supposed Patsy Lee Harvey Oswald. I mean, he was a Jewish mob guy. And, um, you know, there's been numerous documentaries tying the, you know, Jewish mafia, the CIA. I mean, I, I look, I mean, I, I wasn't there. But everything that I've seen, evidence-wise, points to Israel. Really? And you know, they're doing I've, it I, in I, Epstein Island. Dad, they look. did it in Epstein Island. I mean, they've... Yeah, but here's the problem I have with this. You say everything you've seen, right? It just seems to me like you see a lot of conspiracy theory stuff. Uh, I've, seen, I've read a lot he about the JFK assassination. There is zero evidence that any Jews killed no, John F. Kennedy. No, just making a claim. Zero unless you want to go off into some mad conspiracy theory rabbit hole. Uh, and I, again, I say to you that you, you make these big statements. No, it's just gaslighting. Uh, and you have a huge following of people, many of whom will think, well, wow, if Dan Bilzerian says it, a responsible thing maybe here, boy. And, and that way, <laughs> I would argue, this is how a lot of conspiracy theory stuff in the end gets propagated and promoted uh, to the detriment of society. Because people like you who are very smart, there's no question of that, and very successful, and made a lot of money being very successful. I'm just curious why, why you want to be so inflammatory without well, actually having any evidence. Why wouldn't you be just say, like me? Yeah. That's very funny, you know, because Piers Morgan is very successful himself and he made a lot of money himself as well, so much so that he was able to travel during COVID even. And now he's saying to Dan Bilzerian, hey, why don't you join our team? Don't you see? You're in the same position as me, but I'm going to pretend that I am not. And you have to support Israel. Don't you see with your outreach, man? Why you want to be so inflammatory without actually having any evidence? And as you say, you know, to just say, sit back and say, well, I wasn't there. Well, I wasn't there. Obviously, I wasn't even born. But yeah, I know you weren't that there, there were no, but you have an well, opinion there's no, there's on no it. There's no credible evidence that right? Jewish people killed JFK. And yet you just say it as a fact, as if somehow we should just believe this. No, I, I didn't say it as a fact. I said that's what I believe. And if you look at, you know, the history of people that have criticized Israel, you know, Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, JFK, Nixon, I mean, you know, they all have similar fates. And so I don't think that's a coincidence. I also think that today a lot of, you know, quote unquote, conspiracy theories have all come true. So, you know, about, you know, two, three years ago, being a conspiracy theorist, you know, you were a nut job, wacko, whatever. And now it's just like every single one of them seems to be coming true, coming to fruition. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think once you see the government lie to you and lie to you on a scale like they did during COVID, um, you start questioning a lot of things. And I think it's healthy to question things. And I think one of the big reasons why I've marched down this path so things. far is because 
once I started questioning Israel and once I started speaking out against Israel, I saw the ramifications and I saw the pushback. And the side of right is usually never the side that's silencing people. You know, the, the people that are on the right side of history are not the ones trying to, you know, cut off free speech or punish people for what they say. Yeah, it's really amazing to hear Dan speak like that. He's absolutely unfiltered here and simply gives you his opinion, his perspective, his beliefs. And this is what you would expect of the free world after all. But it is impossible. You cannot critique Israel. You cannot critique the Jews. It is absolutely impossible because otherwise you are labeled an anti-Semite, a racist and whatnot, even though you're giving factual numbers. And even in certain instances where he is not, he simply gives you his beliefs. What is so wrong about that? Why is it so inflammatory after all? It is not inflammatory when Piers Morgan downplays the decade-long occupation of Palestine and sees Israel as the victim of all of this. That is not inflammatory whatsoever, right? And when it comes down to the topic of I wasn't there, then is actually right. We don't know anything truly if we haven't experienced it. This is just what it is. And therefore, it is all just an opinion. Nobody truly was there and saw it firsthand, even with evidence on the internet. Who knows? Maybe it is AI generated. You get fed fake imagery, fake news and whatnot. And therefore, you're simply forming an opinion. Dan is doing that too. But somehow Dan, in the free world, is not allowed to form this opinion. And this, of course, boils down to, if you want to know who controls you, ask yourself who you are not supposed to critique. Do you think the, the Jews killed Gaddafi as well? Well, not, well, I mean, yeah, I guess, I mean, Israel. Um, I think that they have way too much control in our government, and I think... It is not Which coincidence is that troll. everybody that's been critical of Israel APEC. has, you know, either been overthrown, you know, shot or ran. Like every, every single person that's been critical of Israel has either been killed or thrown out of power. And I don't think that or that defamed, is a coincidence. Or defamed like him right I mean, now. You know, the reason we fought a lot of these wars is because of Israel. I mean, Israel lied to us. They told us that there was weapons of mass destruction. You know, we, we fought many wars on their behalf. So their influence cannot be, you know, disputed. And the people that we continuously fight just happen to be their natural enemies and they have influence on what we do and that's my biggest issue that's actually one of the reasons why i kind of like started marching down this path is because i see how much control israel has over our government and it's not healthy and i see our politicians acting on behalf of israel instead of on behalf of what is best for the united states and that is you know, as yes, a veteran absolutely. where I really have fucking, you know, huge problems with this. Yeah, again, everything that Dan speaks about here is simply factual. It is a reality. APEC is a reality. APEC means the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. And it is a powerful lobbying group within the United States of America. And yes, it is true. Politicians have to answer to APEC. They have to base their decision making on a certain APEC person even. Certain politicians claimed that too. So now ask yourself the question, is there any other such powerful foreign lobbying group within the United States so powerful to such extent? No, of course not. When it comes down to Russia or China, Nigeria, no, of course not. There is no such foreign lobbying group within the United States but Israel has their own lobbying group that influences the politics directly. So why is that so? I'm sure you do, but when you say that, that uh, what was it you said? That, that Jewish people <laughs> said there were weapons of mass destruction. I mean, it was President Bush. He's not Jewish. It was Colin Powell. He wasn't Jewish as far as I'm aware. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Well, I mean, you're talking about 0.2% of the population, so obviously every single person in there is not Jewish, but it is it is benefiting Jewish interests, and we are operating on behalf of Israel. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying all of our politicians are Jewish, obviously, but what I am saying is Just because is George that Bush Israel said it in the end doesn't mean that it was his idea. That's the only way to explain why they put the interests of Israel above our countries, and you see that. I mean, Look, I truly Obviously. believe that Epstein Island was a Mossad operation and they have dirt on our politicians and they've done plenty of these and that is why they control our country. I mean, explain and it out. That you have why evidence. else would our country be doing everything in Israel's benefit to our own detriment? Israel doesn't do anything for us. 
Why would we be doing that? But we know yes, and this is absolutely understandable, of course, because as I said, you don't have any other such powerful foreign lobbying group within the United States. If you would have that, then of course that group would act in their own interest. So if you have such a strong Russian lobby within the United States, of course they will then act in their own interest. And what would Russia in that example then do with American taxpayers' money? They would fund wars, for example. And this is exactly what Israel is doing. We know why America and the UK, for that matter, Tony Blair, because I spoke to him about it at length at the time, we know why they went to war with Saddam Hussein in 2003. They went because they believed he had weapons of mass destruction. They were the ones who argued it. None of the yeah, senior people argued it from America or the UK. In terms of Tony Blair, George Bush, Colin Powell were Jewish. Uh, this idea that somehow Israel was orchestrating that war, I think is completely non nonsensical. I mean, my brother fought in that war for the British Army. He wasn't ordered into that war by Israel. Uh, it was a decision taken by George Bush and, and Tony Blair. Yeah, Piers Morgan just makes statements yet again without any proof whatsoever. Hey, it was George W. Bush. This is it, of course, because George W. Bush as the president had the loudest voice. However, if you look into it, you will find that Israeli intelligence concurred with US and British assessments that Saddam Hussein possessed weapons of mass destruction. The Brigadier General Shlomo Brom noted that Israeli intelligence agencies shared the belief in Iraq's weapons of mass destruction's capabilities. So now I'm the first one to admit that this is not hard evidence, but at the same time you have to acknowledge that there has been a communication, a cooperation between Israel and the United States and the Brits for that matter. And they came to the conclusion that Saddam Hussein possessed weapons of mass destruction. Now, of course, we don't know who said it first, but we do know that there was a communication indeed. It seems to me that when, when people have accused you of they have, of being anti-Semitic. This is the reason why, is because you look everywhere why? for a reason to blame Israel for absolutely everything, even when there's there's no evidence that it was Israel. <laughs> Just because he cannot in, list in it now doesn't mean there isn't. Taken. There is no evidence that Israel ordered the Iraq war. It was taken by uh, George Bush's administration uh, with the help of people like Tony Blair. That is so funny. What? So yeah, yet again, of course, George W. Bush was the president at the time, and therefore he would have executed the order. He would have pushed the button, so to speak. But how they came to this conclusion is, of course, a different question. Well, we went this there so because funny. Netanyahu testified in front of Congress that they had weapons of mass destruction, which was a total lie, and it was a lie yeah, to benefit Israel because that was an enemy of Israel. So what I'm saying is they're the beneficiary of what we are doing. And it's not in the best interest of the United States. So clearly they've got control over our politicians. Yeah, to be clear again, though, I'm you not saying our politicians are Jewish. I'm saying our politicians are doing what they're telling them to do. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, that's slightly different to what you did say. Uh, when you said on, on Patrick no. Ben Davis podcast, well, they play the victim card so effing much about Jewish people. I mean, do you not understand why Jewish people might feel a sense of victimhood, given that six million of them were killed in World War II by a genocidal monster he has to bring in the Holocaust? Do you not understand why that might make Jewish people feel that, yes, they have well, indeed I mean, that been victims? Feelings, feelings. See, now he has no argument and therefore he has to bring up emotion. Feelings, that's how they feel. But we're not talking about individual people and their feelings. We're speaking about the state of Israel and the atrocities that the state of Israel commits. Yeah, I mean, that figure has been revised, but, you know, <laughs> no, I believe that Jewish supremacy that. is the greatest threat to America. And I think it's the greatest threat to the world today. I truly believe that. What do you mean the Fair figure enough? has been revised? What do you mean? Well, they said Even that mainstream will it say was that. 4 million that died in Auschwitz, and then they said it was down to a million. So they've revised the figure. Yes, that is true. Well, how many people, how many, how many people do you Cross think were killed in the Holocaust? 271,000 that died in Auschwitz. How many do you think were killed in the Holocaust? Um, I don't know, but I would bet my entire net worth that it was under 6 million. Yeah, again, again it's a mainstream opinion, down, actually. What's... What's the motivation for making claims like that? Oh what do you stand God. to get? So there you see it again. What makes you say that you cannot say that? And meanwhile, yes, numbers from Auschwitz, for example, have been revised. 
At first, they said it was roughly 4 million Jews being killed in that labor camp. And then they revised the number and then they narrowed it down to 1.1 million. And this, of course, tells you that ultimately nobody truly knows and that the numbers are wrong or they used to be wrong. And now they're trying to find out what the truth is. They said 4 million first and then they came down to 1 million. That is a huge drop, of course. And therefore, why do you cling so much to the number 6 million? It has to be 6 million. It has been said once. And therefore, this is now the gospel. This is our new religion. It has to stay 6 million, even though you see revision in those statements. And now Dan Bozerian is simply pointing that out. And you do not let him. You do not let him have those thoughts, even though they are factual. Those are numbers that you can look up yourself. Again, I simply ask you, Dan, what, what's, what's the motivation for making claims like that? What do you stand to gain what's by the trying motivation to diminish what happened? What's the motivation of the experts uh, well, that came up answer, with the I'm number? I'm just answering your question. I mean, I, I, I'm a gambler, so I, you know, if, I, if I think that you know, something is a low probability, then I, I would bet on it. And I don't know for a fact, but the evidence all says that it was less than six million. I mean, just yes. the mathematics don't work. Sure. Like, you can't cremate that many bodies. Like the whole like, you know, gas Impossible. chamber thing, it's a very ineffective way to kill people. So when people have researched this and, they, if, and they've done the due diligence, they said it's mathematically impossible. You see, I'm sorry, but I just find that unbelievably offensive. And I'm not even Jewish. <laughs> but why Again, then? there is clear evidence. Why is that offensive? People almost predominantly no, Jewish, there is not. killed. Yeah, and as always, we have to be very, very careful here because ultimately free speech does not exist anywhere at this moment. But the question is, of course, why are you offended? Why do you find this so inflammatory, so problematic, and you're so deeply offended even though you're not Jewish? Why? If we look into any other genocide, I mean, you're not even offended when it comes down to the Palestinian genocide. So if different numbers are thrown around, it does absolutely nothing to you. You don't get triggered. But in this instance, you have to. Why are you not getting offended about the genocide in Congo, for example, when King Leopold, the Belgian guy, went over there and genocided roughly 10 to 15 million Congolese? Now, I don't have the true numbers. I don't know. I wasn't there. Was it 10 million? Was it 15 million? This is quite a big number, right? Now, if somebody says it was 10 million or maybe 9 million, I should get offended about this, of course. Why would I? A genocide happened over there. Yes, it is atrocious. And now we're looking into the numbers. Why is this a big deal? And moreover, yet again, why is nobody speaking about Congo? The Holocaust. 12 million were killed by the Nazis in total. Yeah, they were a genocide. 15 million by King Leopold. Who wanted to eliminate now, the Jewish people. Atrocities. And they tried extremely yes. hard to do that. You said 12 million were killed? The Nazis killed 12 million people in World War II. 6 million were killed in you the... You said 12... 6 million were killed in the Holocaust. Or do you not believe that either? Okay. I mean, Jews have killed far more Christians... Well, Jews have killed far more... Let's just accept the 6 million figure. Jews have killed far more Christians than that. Roughly I mean, it's not even 20 close. Million, if you look at, at the Bolshevik Russia. genocide... You look at the Holodomor, I mean, they've killed way more Christians. I mean, they basically invented the genocide. So <laughs> Yeah, 20 million. You know, they, they deny the, the Armenian numbers. genocide. Israel denies that. They've lobbied the U.S. to deny that. I'm Armenian. They killed half of my people. So you know, Get offended. I, and I'm not now. offended by that. You know, if somebody questions that, it's not some crazy thing. I mean, Israel denies the Armenian Holocaust. Okay. It sounds to me, Dan, like you do actually hate Jewish people. <laughs> what? No, I believe that Jewish supremacy <laughs> is the greatest. This is so amazing, right? And Dan will get no sympathy whatsoever about his people, the Armenians that have been genocided. Let's not talk about it. It sounds like you're hating Jewish people, Dan, don't you see? Correct the world oh, today. I look at what they're doing in the media. They're pushing this transgender nonsense. I mean, and they did it in Germany. The first transgender clinic was opened by a Jewish guy. And it's factual. I don't like this perversion push on our children. I don't like the fact that nine-year-olds are reading about homosexual acts. I don't like that drag queens are reading them in schools. I don't like that Kamala Harris wants to pay for sex changes in prison so that men can turn into women and women can turn into men. And Incredibly I don't like the fact that he's based. putting in, you know, men into women's prisons, male rapists into women's prisons because they identify as women. I mean, it's just nonsense. I don't like, you know, men beating up women in boxing and sports. I, I think it's all nonsense. Like and I think it's leading Excuse me. to a degradation of moral fiber. And 
if left unchecked, I think it's going to ruin the world. But again, you're blaming Jewish people. Why? Because they're pushing this. What do you mean they're pushing it? What are you talking about? Well, I mean, they're <laughs> controlling the media. I mean, the DEI is being pushed by BlackRock. BlackRock's execs are all Jewish. Um, you know, <laughs> look, look at where this space. is coming from. It's, it's not a surprise. Dan, all the Disney execs are Jewish. Dan, it, they're it, pushing it, it on children. But do you accept, Dan, that you are just blatantly anti-Semitic? <laughs> Look, I, I have an issue with that term. I mean, I think the real Semites are the Palestinians. I mean, they've, they've That's true. you know, the, the DNA tests that they've done on the Israelis that are living over there, it's their Eastern European Ashkenazi Jews. I don't even think they're actual Semites. They don't have ancient Hebrew DNA, which is why DNA testing is illegal in Israel. <laughs> I mean, you're literally denying their existence now. I mean, you are just, you are just a brazen anti-Semite, aren't you? You hate Jewish people, you hate Israel, you <laughs> hate the state of Israel. He just explained that most Jewish people living in Israel have no Semitic DNA, but they are Europeans, Ashkenazi Jewish. We know that for a fact, right? Most of them, not all, of course. And therefore, to be anti-Semitic would mean that you're anti-Palestine as well, that you're anti-Arab. It's not as if Jews have a monopoly on that word. Matter of fact, they do nowadays because of the push in mainstream media, but it is not factual. Yet again. Well, it's government, everything well, about I mean, it. Do not, You're blaming when, when them you for, say, you blame them this interview for literally absolutely everything. When you say, well, I think not most everything. of the problems today are ca is caused by Jewish supremacy. I believe that. If you would have said that about white supremacy, well, honestly, it would be a okay you, that you would say all this publicly, given what a high profile you have. <laughs> Yeah, Why? I mean, it is not a, um, it's it's not a popular opinion for somebody <laughs> that, you know, cares about money no, and it's not. cares about, you know, not being canceled. I mean, that's the problem is you can say whatever you want against Muslims. You can be, you know, yep. super anti-Muslim. You can yep. talk about them and nobody cares. But if you say anything about Jewish people, you get canceled. They, you know, look what they did to Kanye. I mean, so why, why are they such a You can a say it against class? whites as well. Let me ask you that. You can be against I white think supremacy, are. I think but not class Jewish I get targeted supremacy. by people like you, and indeed by Kanye, who spewed horrible anti-Semitic nonsense. But yours it seems to me to be more insidious, because you're literally blaming... So you think, you th you're you literally think that Kanye with respect, targeted let me them finish. and not the other way finish. around? You're literally blaming Jewish people for almost everything that's happened that you don't like in the world. That is the purest personification of anti-Semitism right there. That's what it is. Mm. Well, when Not you have a religion that promotes supremacy, when you have a religion that says that you are better than other people, and when you have a religion that says it's okay to steal from other people as long as they're not Jewish, when you have a religion that says it's okay to rape people that aren't Jewish, when you have a religion that talks about having sex with you know kids that are under three years old, um, no, when you have factual. a religion that promotes these things and promotes supremacy, I think you're going to have problems. And you see that in Israel. Israel is a manifestation of that religion. And I think that religion is, you know, it, it, it's, it's terrible. I don't believe in white supremacy. I don't believe in Jewish supremacy. I don't believe in supremacy at all. And right now, I think you have massive that Jewish is Islam. supremacy. You sound like a Nazi. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, Morgan must be a troll at this point. This is really amazing. Because Dan Bilzerian just said that he doesn't believe in supremacy. He doesn't believe in Jewish supremacy. He doesn't believe in white supremacy, etc. And now the response of Piers Morgan is, oh, here, well, you sound like a Nazi. Yeah, based on what? That he doesn't believe that one group is superior to another? I mean, why do you say that? <laughs> That's literally what Nazis why? would have said in World War II. They, they would, would have literally articulated their hatred of Jewish people no white and supremacy. the reasons why in exactly the way you've just done. I don't have a hatred for Jewish people. You do? I don't like a religion that says that they're better than other people. And I... What's that? Well, you Which do. Does. You obviously do. It's blatant. No one watching this will draw any other conclusion. I'm staggered about how brazen you are. I do. drew another conclusion. Well... Hmm. Can I? Am I allowed? Yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't like it when people think they're better than other people. And you see that in Israel, and they're acting like that, and they're treating Palestinians like second-class citizens. They're treating them like subhuman yeah. beasts. And it sells that in their Talmud. So it says if you are not a Jew, that you are basically subhuman. An and I don't think that less. Judaism and Christianity go hand in hand. I mean, they believe that Jesus is in hell burning in human shit. And they believe that the Virgin Mary is a whore. 
So I don't think those are two religions yes. that really intersect very well. And people will get triggered by what he says here, but the reality is the reality. The passages that he paraphrased there are truly found within the Talmud. And therefore, this is a Jewish belief. And this is why I mentioned a million times before here on this channel that there is no such thing as Judeo-Christian values because those values and those belief systems are mutually exclusive. But, you know, we've been programmed that they do and we've been programmed that it's okay and that Jews are the chosen people and I just disagree yeah. with that. I think everybody's equal. Do, do you even comprehend how this interview is going to play, play out when it airs? Yeah, I'm sure it'll be bad. But, you know, my, my opinion is not politically correct, but I believe that is the truth. Fair You're living in, in Qatar now. Uh, well, that's where I'm at right now. I'm not living here, but visiting. Nice. Well, is, it, is, it, is it the case that you feel safer to spew this kind of stuff from Qatar than you would spewing it in the United States? Well, I mean, I've had a lot of Jewish people attack me since I started standing up in support of Palestine. Um, when I started saying things that were against Israel, I found that I was, I had my Jewish business manager tried to extort me. I had um, lawyers do things that were illegal. And, you know, I found a lot of, you know, just hatred from the Jewish community because I was speaking out against the genocide. And that really opened my eyes to what's going on. Yeah, you know why Jewish like I people? Said, rarely is it the case that people on the right side of history are the ones that are trying to silence people. Yeah, the reason Jewish people may dislike you is because of your obvious, obvious hatred for them and everything they stand for. I mean, you've literally spent the last twenty minutes on an anti-Semitic rant that makes Kanye look like a, a choir boy. I'm, not, I'm just a choir I'm boy. Staggered, but you're also confused as to what you think you'll gain from this, other than you're just laying bare your anti-Semitism for everyone to I see. Don't, I don't think I'm going to gain anything. I think, yeah, I think it'll be horrible for me. But, you know, it's it's what I believe. I don't I don't think that Jews like Christians. And you see it when they, you know, That's killed true. them during the, you know, the whole the more, the Bolshevik genocide. I mean, the Bolsheviks, the, the leadership was 84% Jewish and they were just mass killing Christians and nobody talks about that. Yeah. Let me just ask you one more time to, to, be, to be honest. The history but, books don't cover that. Right, let me just ask yes. you one more time, just, just for clarity. I think you should be honest. But do you hate Jewish people? No, I don't. He doesn't care for those other genocides at all. Then why do you spew such hatred about them? But he didn't. Well, I don't like what they've done. I don't like what their religion preaches. I don't like what's going on in Israel. I don't like their influence over our government. So, Fair. you know, what, what do you like about Jewish people? Um, I mean, I would say on average, they're more intelligent. That's it. What else I does mean, he need to like now? I mean, look. Piers Morgan, what do you like about Mongolian people? Piers Morgan, what do you like about Northern Macedonian people? Piers Morgan, what do you like about Polish people? What kind of generic question is that? If he hasn't been surrounded by too many Jews, what would he then have to like about Jewish people? Maybe he doesn't like Jewish cuisine. Maybe he doesn't like Jewish music. That doesn't make you an anti-Semite. Why does he have to like something now about Jewish people in general in order to not be classified as a Nazi? That's absolutely ridiculous, man. Zimbabwe, Tajikistan, Luxembourg. There are so many countries that when you are being put on the spot, you have absolutely no idea what to answer there. You know, there's there's two billion so Muslims, but everybody wants to, you know, promote this anti-Muslim, this hatred for Muslim, like they're sure, all, you, you know, these terrorists. And I think the Israelis are the terrorists. I think they are the ones perpetuating the big acts of terrorism. And he even says, I think. And, okay. you know, nobody wants to talk about that. And what do you say to Jewish people who may watch this and be utterly horrified by what they're hearing? They can be horrified. I mean, I was horrified to find that they mass murdered Christians. I was horrified to learn the things that they teach in the Talmud. I was horrified that they know. think that Jesus is burning and shit in hell. I was horrified that they think that the Virgin Mary is a whore. I was horrified to learn that they think it's okay to steal from Gentiles. I was horrified to hear that there's, you know, two sets of justice. I was horrified to find out that they think it's okay to, you know, gang rape Palestinian prisoners. I was horrified about all those things. I'm horrified that we're funding a genocide right now. Again, all factual. So they it's can true. be horrified. Dan Bozerim.
<laughs> All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is, so I have to cut it off here. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this interview. I said pretty much everything I hopefully can say here on this platform. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh